السلام عليكم سيدي وعليكم السلام سيدي in the cover who is punished the nafs soul or shaitan forgive me for my ignorance and for my bad adab <laughs> وعليكم السلام all three of you <laughs> yeah. you know the, this subject of qabr is nice because the ones who don't do seclusion they talk from left to right. So the most interesting analogy that you can give is if you take your children, give them a medical book which would be in reference to holy hadith and say, read a few chapters of this medical book to me. Children reading a medical book haq, yeah very true, would sound extremely ridiculous, right? Why? No point of reference. So it, you're just reading things while you know the one who's hearing they don't know what they're even reading because there's no himma, there's no hikmah in, in their words. And this is a nation that used to all do khalwa because it was a part of Islamic tarbiyah and akhlaq that you had to do 40 days. The concept of the 40 days is the 40 days of the grave. So the shaykhs in their training they have to do their khalwa. Coming Ramadan you have 10 days of this opportunity and itiqah in which you isolate yourself in your home and your a room and your bedroom wherever you can on the last 10 days asking Allah at minan nar is free me from fire let me to see the fire of my grave. Why? Because when the shaykhs speak on that subject they saw it. They went into seclusions and their seclusion, the first seclusion they do of 40 days is all the punishment of the grave. So we have articles, easiest way to search our, our teachings is to go to nurmuhammad.com, muhammadanway.com all of them forward. So everything now should be Muhammadan Way just like our app and all our branding is Muhammadan Way. You type in muhammadanway.com it takes you straight to the website Nur Muhammad. Nur Muhammad you type in seclusion and ihtikaf. Two or three articles, each article has a link to the actual YouTube and then very detailed articles with the reference to Qur'an and hadith. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Because I don't make reference to the full ayatul Qur'an and, and the full hadith with all its footnotes but the editors afterwards put the whole article together like a document for jurisprudence and marifah all in, in one. So that's all the teaching there. As a result of their itikaf and as a result of their khalwa they saw it. They entered in, they start to meditate over the days as their wazifas become stronger and zikr become stronger. They understood all the manifestation of the energies they bring into that room will manifest. Those energies come to attack ourselves. So attacks the person, attacks the nafs will bring its energies to attack means that in this little box everything is coming out. So like a child plays in the backyard, puts all these creatures in its pockets, picks up worms, picks up bugs, picks up cockroaches, puts them all in the pocket and you say, come on son get in the car we gotta go. But as soon as he gets in this closed environment what happens? All the things he put into his pocket. They're now coming out into that car. All the creepy crawly creatures that he brought with him 
they come out. So the grave is a place in what you bring what you brought with you. So Allah doesn't need to send anything extra in, we're pretty good at bringing our own problems into the grave. So every action has an energy, has a manifestation. If all your life you were viciously mean then you should know that there's vicious animals that will meet you into the grave manifesting your character as that creature. If you were like a rat and you acted like a rat your grave will be just filled with rats. That's why we tell people don't exhibit the character of a rat, you know the rat when it goes around its contamination is its waste. It just goes around and, and, and makes everything to be contaminated. And that, that character if you begin to exhibit that by just backbiting and talking bad about a people and a community that used to be a part of, you exhibit now you're a rat and as a result of that rat your grave will be filled with rats. So whatever you bring with you is there for you to greet you. Because Prophet taught to us that everyone will have companions in the grave. So make your companion to be a good one, means good action. So imagine now you fed people all the time, mashaAllah our people are, are amazing, they're feeding people left and right, left and right, left and right. Your companion will be those beautiful a actions. When you enter the grave you see a beautific angel shining with lights that you can't imagine, say, what are you? And who are you and why are you in my grave? Them all the people that you fed and Allah made me to be an angel for you and to sit and to be your companion within the grave. For if you should have difficulty I'm here to resolve them. We can't understand that how our good deeds are going to manifest because we're not a people of complete faith yet, we're people doubting questioning, should I give, should I do, should I believe? And the duty of the shaykh is to teach people, no, no believe these actions and what Prophet taught for us, the shaykhs witnessed it. They witnessed they went into seclusions, they witnessed all of the horrific energies that had to come out, they witnessed their madad and their support that when it became too heavy to clean. The support of their shaykhs were to be present with them, sitting with them as if you were sitting with a physical person and supporting them, giving them energy to fight and to push back every type of negativity. It's not something, a philosophy that maybe the shaykh will come, maybe he doesn't. They lived by it, they survive by it. As a result they can now only survive by that madad. If they didn't have that madad they would have been dead by devils. So these, these are immense realities, that's why then you have to meditate. It is your biggest safeguard for what awaits you on this earth and if you didn't believe us about this earth, what awaits people in their grave. So it's the skill, the very life skill that is essential in our survival upon this earth to call upon those whom are holier than ourselves, they're more powerful than ourselves, more knowledgeable than ourselves because it's a sign of humility and Allah loves the humble not the arrogant. As a result of training to always feel that I need the madad and support, it's an immense help within the grave because those whom understand that support they begin to ask them, that I'll be open my grave from now and begin to train on how to seclude yourself on a daily basis. As a result they're continuously in khalwa, continuously in their connection, fighting every type of difficulty only by means of support and they know their weakness, they know their inability and they know how much they rely entirely upon Sayyidina Muhammad's love. For if they have that love they have the support of Allah because you can't say, oh they, they know how much they have from Allah they have nothing from Allah if not the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad with them. So all of that brings then the, the might and majesty of Allah as their support. 
So we live by that, have to live by that and then to teach that. So that's important is that learn the tafakkur, learn the contemplation, get the timeless reality, study it, read it, ask your questions from that so that it… so that it understood that you're reading the text, learning it and understanding it and becomes immense safeguard against every difficulty, every shortcoming. Anyone saying their rizq is not coming or then you shouldn't be… you should be meditating and making your salawats and making your connection. You have difficulties, things are not opening, you, you, this is a problem, make your connection. And you say, no Shaykh I'm making my connection well then you're not changing your character, something in your connection is not right. Why? Because you know when you make connection your character becomes good. Have you… do you think there's a person who can make a connection and their character is bad? No, by night time you're going to get a beating with that connection. It's taqullah. You know what taqwa is? It's not the people who say they have taqwa and they're blind as a bat, they're behind seven feet of steel. They're doing it, every bad thing they want, it doesn't matter for them. The person who has taqwa is the one whom sees with his heart because that connection is so precious if they do anything to endanger that connection they don't know how to live on this earth anymore after sustaining themselves by that connection. Means they ha these are the people of taqwa. So imagine the student that can achieve that and open that door in which they feel the presence of the shaykh, they feel the tajalli of the shaykh, they feel the flow of knowledges and madad flowing to them and they go out and do kooky crazy things, by the next day it would be cut and they wouldn't know how to even survive. So those whom think they have a connection is different than the ones whom actually feel the fires, they live and they, they, they emanate from the vibration of that fires. And as a result the proofs are their ulum and the knowledges that flowing not from their heart and their tongue, that their heart is owned by somebody else and their tongue is under someone else's command. As a result of that they don't do those things. So anyone saying, no I meditate, I have these problems, no you're not meditating and that's why you have those problems. And if you truly made your connection you wouldn't talk bad, you wouldn't be angry, you wouldn't be hurting, you wouldn't be bothering people and as a result everything else in your life would have been under Allah's ridha and satisfaction. So everything is all connected. It used to be like these lights, these garden lights that all these like light bulbs on one wire and you plug it in you say, ah man the whole thing is not, not going on, what's going on? One of the bulbs if it's bad it destroys the whole current in the wire, none of the lights will go on. And you have to go through each bulb testing which one is the bad bulb, bad light, bad connection. Well we are, we are much more complicated than that, means if we want the system to work everything has to be operational exactly like they're teaching, that you connect, you meditate. You live by that connection, strong connection with the shaykh. You feel the fires, you feel the guidance and you feel the, the fear of doing wrong because every night they're sitting with you in your accounting where well, you can't lie to them, you can't cheat them, that they're sitting there in the accounting with you, that do this correctly, don't do like that, do like this, don't do like that. As a result of that sincerity that opens within them, the fires of the shaykh is now dressing them. That's what we describe when they make Muhammadun Rasulullah every salawat that is entering into them is the light of Prophet entering and staying upon them. They don't want to lose that. So means it's all connected. This is a medical office with very specific testing and, and and they can make their diagnosis on very scientific spiritual realities. What you say reveals a great deal about you. So the questions and answers is good so that to 
get an understanding of where people are at and where they should be at. They should be focusing wholly on connecting, 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 few minutes every day until they feel the connection, feel their heart connected, feel the energies that are flowing. As a result of that connection to grow stronger and sincere they should be making an accounting now. That will correct their bad character because you lose the connection in no time if you started having bad character because they don't stand with you while you're acting uh, all over the place. So everything has its, its, its way. We pray that Allah opens its realities inshaAllah and that people follow the way and they don't mix and match and take from different things inshaAllah. Otherwise it take a long time for anything to be achieved inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, what does it mean to be under the intercession of multiple holy souls? This is what we just talked about the matter. Allah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. So you had mentioned yesterday that Allah has ancient love for the ones being called to these gatherings of zikr. How about the ones not in these gatherings? Did Allah favor some people over others or just left them to earn this honor with their efforts? <coughs> Allah's hikmah is for Allah to describe why Allah does what Allah wants to do. That's not for us to speak. <coughs> but for us to understand that Allah says in Holy Qur'an, I allow in Surah the nur about the verses of Allah allows my name to be mentioned in their homes. What's that mean? <clears throat> and in their homes one and the greatest home for a servant is actually in their heart because your heart is where your home, your home is where your heart is. So when Allah says, I allow my name to be mentioned in their homes is not your cleverness that you do anything and that's why when the prayer call comes we say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi alayhi wa There is no power, no help except for Allah. Means I can't even answer that call to prayer if Allah is not helping me. Ya Rabbi if you're not helping me, if I have no power and no help to reach to that prayer to get up or for it to come to my mind to make that prayer. So everything is in Allah calling us. So that's, a, that's the reality. If Allah calls you, you will enter into Islam. If Allah does not call you, you will not. So Prophet called upon people whom he loved and Allah says, you know, you call as much as you want but it's based on what is Divinely written. And that's for us just to understand because this is the highest personality of authority. And that it's not whom we want to call to Allah but whom Allah is calling to Himself. And we basically publicize here, this is an oasis for all those whom are being called by Allah So it's not like you bring a companion with you and say, come, come listen to this guy. No, Allah has to be calling that person too. So this is a way that in which Allah has called His servants. So we don't take the credit from ourself and from our nafs. And those whom Allah calls, He calls to their degrees. So He calls many to Islam but doesn't mean that He called them to Iman because Allah has to grant them a support that for you to have Iman I have to call you to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and that was the whole talk tonight is that we are we were destined by that love because Allah put into our heart, make the root, make salawat. As soon as you made that salawat and love to make that salawat, 
that was this key that Allah gave, I put this love in your heart that will make you to reach to me. For if you didn't have that durood and the desire to make the durood, you would have never reached my Divinely Presence. There's no other highway you can take. So these are all the gifts of Allah To be under the guidance of awliya is huge gift of Allah We describe so many beatific things. We were traveling with Mawlana Shaykh, Sultan and awliya and going and they were walking through these streets and this… out of all the people on this street two Pakistani boys came running, young men in Europe. Young men came running into our whole entourage, they ran and they grabbed you know, they, they grabbed Mulana Shaykh's hands and they kissed it so much. And Mulana Shaykh was so happy to see them that uh, whoever taught you taught you good and he was so pleased by their character and that how Allah gave such good character to these young boys who when they saw this huge awliya and they don't know probably how huge he is but that they had good enough character taught by them, inspired within their being that Allah put into their heart, run to him, you don't know who that man is walking on the street amongst people and they ran, they heard the call to Allah they ran and they kissed his hand and that whole day they were so happy, Mawlana Shaykh was so happy because this was a destined souls to come under his tarbiyah and under his holy nazar. But there were thousands on the street and they didn't. So whom Allah gave that gift, He truly gave a gift. That out of the whole randomness of this world, these two boys are on that street, on that time the shaykh is walking in Europe. It doesn't happen, he's not going there back and forth every day. But this is the, the destiny and the immensity of this life of ours and those children were taught with such beatific manners that if you see these holy ones, you see like this, run to them and ask du'a, du'a and ask for them and accompany them and exactly what they did. And because of their good manners Allah put into their heart to look and they saw this is a huge wali and they ran. So I mean these are, these are just amazing experiences in life and uh, immense realities. So these are gifts from Allah Every step of guidance and every darajat of guidance is an immense gift, none of which don't let your ego to claim. It's not from your cleverness, not from my cleverness. So that our ego has nothing, if left to my ego I would have been a complete uh, disaster in life. So this is only Allah's gift and ni'mat and we pray that He never take that gift away and that He always increase His gifts and His generosity. Allah not like humans that they give you five and then next day they take back five. Allah to give and always expand as long as the servant is thankful for what he's received or she's received. So we say, Alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah and then Allah inshaAllah increase His ni'mat and increase His bounty upon our souls inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as Sayyidi, how does the reality of the different Naat, Sharifs and Qawwali we recite during Milad compared to the reality of salawat and durood bringing Muhammad and light into being? Each one is an immense light, each one is our immense secrets. So reciting as many as you can, reciting the naat, reciting all of these duroods, they are all immense secrets. Each has different flavors, different realities, different openings, different oceans of forgiveness. The, uh, as many as the drops of rain are the duru the sharif from beginning of time to the end of time. As many as the drops in the oceans, each duru the sharif has its own tajalli and its own reality. So making them as much as possible, making the duru the sharif as much as possible, reciting the different nat 
as much as possible. These are what fragrance the soul and sweeten the soul with the beatific fragrance, what make it above the angelic realm. So this is a immense oceans and, and realities and opportunities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullahi wa uh, How do we practically eliminate fear, this wretched rope of Satan? Stepping out now, knowing about frequencies has led to being fearful when stepping out. No, it shouldn't be fearful. This is a uh, knowledge is for strength, definitely not fear. Fear is a lack of faith. So you have to make the connection, again that's the whole thing, make your connection and, and do your practices because this is about faith and empowerment. You know I ignorance is not… Uh, to not know something is, uh, is not safe. Although there's a ignorance is bliss, not on this subject because people say, well I didn't know I couldn't go there. And they're getting contaminated, they're getting hurt, they're getting all sorts of difficulties but as a result of not knowing about energy. Once they start studying about the energy then they're also taught and get the energy book on how to build your energy, how to make your meditation, get the meditation book, make your connection. So these are two books that are required based on that connection, that question. You have to know how to connect, you have to know what and how to build your energy. If you build your energy and connect, you go out knowing where you're going and the force that you have upon you, the light you have upon you, what is it a fear? And you know where not to go with that light, and not to do bad things and not to go bad places. So there's nothing to fear as a matter of fact you should be empowered with the knowledge because knowledge is power. But if you're hearing it and say, oh, I haven't read the book. I don't know how to meditate, I don't know anything about this energy stuff, you should be fearful. But you, you should also have been a student of the way to, I'm going to learn how to do the meditation, I want to understand these realities of energy and it's very real and how do I get my vibration up and how do I defend myself against all of this uh, craziness, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum dear Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam Can you please give me advice how to live these teachings as I am a public person and a soccer coach? Public person and soccer coach or the soccer coach makes you a public person? <laughs> the teachings are exactly I'm a public person. So this is, the, this is why the teachings is meditate, contemplate, build your shield, build your energy and uh, alhamdulillah with that energy and with that protection then anywhere you go that protection is upon you, that light is upon you. Have your ta'weez, have all the things that were, were given that the purpose of the ta'weez is to have a protection, our home, our car and our persons, our property, everything to be protected. Protect your property, not only yourself only but you protect your property and that which is… Uh, belongs to you. And the, the cane is a protection, the ring is a protection. Now all of these different things that are coming out, these are like an armament that keep yourself with all of these. Going to put out something for Surat the Yaseen that you'll wear under your clothes. Not to be taken to the bathroom, the most common thing is they see these clothes and they keep texting that, how do you wear these clothes and go to the bathroom? Well, first understanding is that you have Qur'an, so you don't take Qur'an anywhere inappropriate. So people have an aql to understand that. Same thing, anything with religious writings don't take it into the washroom, you take it off and don't put it in the washroom, don't put it on the floor because these are all holy items. So that has to be in the aql of… and the mind of people. That's why they say, oh well if we sell Qur'an in, in the bookstore everybody will take it into the facility. So why would you do something like that? Your brain tells you, don't take that there. So for everything else, don't take your turban there, don't take your ring in there, don't take your, 
tawis in there, don't take your jacket if it has tawis upon it, don't take it into the wash facility. So these things that will be coming out, these are for protection. So an, an undershirt with Surah Yaseen is a shifa. So they used to make a with Yaseen written by hand and they would put this over a person who had a sickness, a fever or flu and they would wear it. And these were ruqya and ways of healing. But if you make it as an undergarment that you wear with all your clothing, these are all ruqya. So it's understood you take these things off before you go for facilities. This is a way of rijal and, and uh, manhood and knighthood. So it's common sense, knights they didn't go into the facility with their armors and their swords and their knighthood. They understood things you put aside <laughs> and then you go, you go for washing. So yeah, I just I don't know why the people ask like that. Our phones are filled with Qur'an and taweez, we don't ever take that into the wash facility unless it's wrapped in luggages and, and put away. You don't take these things because all of them have taweezes upon everything. So everybody has to use their, their hikmah and their, their wisdom that if you want to be a custodian of these, these relics, these items, you have to govern yourself as a rijal and a mature individual and to sort of know what is what and what to do and what not to do. And that's the only way to protect ourselves against these things and these difficulties that are coming upon the earth inshaAllah. Oh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Mikhul Salaam Wa Sayyidi, how to be more grateful? Make zikr alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah <laughs> and, and show your gratefulness, right? Because everything is based on showing it. So why Allah make the first thing you do to come into Islam is what? Give shahada. You have to say in front of everybody, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah wa Why? Allah knows if He gave you the shahada in your heart to say or not. But He wants you to know that say it and remind yourself. So means that we have to say and remind ourselves of the, our character. You want to be grateful, show your gratefulness and give a gift, give a sadaqah, give mawlid. If you're grateful for something, what would you do? If you were grateful for somebody saving your child's life, what would you do for that person? Probably a lot. If you're grateful that you, you were saved from a legal battle that would have destroyed your entire life, what would you do? You would show gratefulness. Why when it comes to religion people don't… they, ha they have a question on how to show they're grateful. If you're grateful for the food you have, go out and give people food. If you're grateful for the money you have, give a portion of that to charity. That's how we show gratefulness is by an action. If you're grateful for the love of Prophet go out and spread the, the love of Prophet The big mawlids, the big events, take articles, share them. When you share an article on the love of Sayyidina Muhammad isn't that showing gratefulness? Because you're telling everybody else, how much I love Prophet and I want to share this with everybody. That shows gratefulness. So gratefulness is an action. So it's not something that's just silently and only saying, alhamdulillah wa shukran which is great because Allah wants that from you, but by an action and putting our faith in action inshaAllah, that shows gratefulness, that rings loud within the heavens for the servants whom, who put their faith in action at every moment inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa what does it mean if you keep seeing the numbers 666 everywhere? I heard it means mark of the beast. Yeah, that means you're watching too many scary movies <laughs> or, or, or our scary videos because we have it on our scary videos. So yeah, that has to do with their, their system, their system of dajjal that coming out and their mark of the beast. and. We have a whole subject on that on Nur Muhammad. So the reality of the heart 
is six sixes, right? Because the six sixes is 36, is common, is a complete heart because it has three sixes up, three sixes down because three sixes is 18, 18 is the, is the reality of hai, ha ya. So, one high is for the soul and one high is for the body. So complete are the ones whom open the oceans of high and the oceans of eternity upon their soul and that they open the ocean of eternity on their physicality. Because once you open the reality of your soul, you're an eternal servant on your physicality. So the perfection is in 36 and then that becomes Yaseen, the heart of Holy Qur'an and all the realities that are being taught in the book Yaseen, the book Lataif Qalb, all of those is about this path towards realities. But Dajjal and shaitans they don't ask and don't talk about the high of the soul. What they ask is that you take the high of dunya. That Right away, right off that you don't want anything from your soul and we're going to give you the hayat of dunya, to have your life as if you live it forever on this earth. And that's why then they give them money and every sort of material dunya issue in life. So they sold their soul for a small price and that's why then they're promoting their 666. And it's in their logos, it's in their award shows, it's in the, the stage designs because they represent that system of Hayat al dunya and Kaam Habibi Kaam to Dubai. This Hayat al dunya sickness that the Dajjal represents. So all of that system then is for that. But the people whom calling to the six sixes and to the reality of Yaseen and to the reality known as Muhammadun Rasulullah is a counter to Dajjal and is the force against Dajjal inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, as Ramadan is approaching, can you please guide us on how to manage our time better between dunya and our isolation? Please forgive me for my lack of understanding and bad adab. No problem, time better, you do your time management inshaAllah, write, write your, your time management and organize yourself and organize your life that every day you do your awrad at a specific time, do the practices at specific times. So Ramadan pretty much will organize that anyways because you're going to base, base it on your suhoor and iftar times and uh, how you're going to do everything uh, pretty much will fix itself. But in life generally discipline yourself with the times that you're going to do your zikr. That when are you going to do your awrad and you religiously stick with that time. When you're going to do your Allah, make your salawats and all of that throughout the day and you write that like on a time chart and say, every day at this time I'm going to start doing my salawats, every time at this time I'm going to do my dhikr of Allah. And you discipline yourself with a regiment, that way you stick upon it. If you leave it for the end of the night you end up forgetting and doing everything and you don't do anything and you try to save it for the end of the night and pass out doing it. So everything in life is a discipline and Islam is the most important part to have a discipline. Just like how Allah has us praying at specific times, gives us a little bit of leeway in between the times but important because of the energies of those times to be praying and to be worshipping Allah At the same time you make a cycle on a chart that during these days and this time I'm going to make salawat, durood, I'm going to make my awrad, I'm going to read my dalal al khirat and then you keep to that schedule like a time chart organizer and you know every day that's your thing and you can even have your phone remind you, it's my dalal al khirat time and it reminds you to read. This is my salawat time and reminds you to read inshaAllah. But requires a discipline and that uh, people try to put a discipline into their spiritual and religious practices 
so that to be successful and that you do in business and work and everything else. The one whom are most successful are the ones whom have a strong discipline. They, they do everything they're supposed to and they have the discipline to carry it out and the sense of responsibility that they have to carry it out. So imagine if they ran things and they had no responsibility, they wouldn't pay the bills, they wouldn't pay electricity, they wouldn't pay uh, all the things that have to be done and everything would collapse. So that's irresponsible person. So responsible people have everything organized and everything they take a care and they can't sleep without it being done. So that is the same requirement that's needed in Islam inshaAllah and to be successful in the tariqah inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.